Good morning and welcome to our Uncommon Church community. We are so glad that you have decided to join us for worship this morning. When you worship with First Parish, we hope three things for you. That you would experience God, that you would get to know your neighbor a little bit better, and that you would leave this time inspired to live a life of love. If you are joining us for worship on Sunday morning, February 21st, we hope that you will chat with us in the comments or in the chat on YouTube. And if you are joining us at a later time, we hope that you will reach out to us and be in conversation with one of our pastors. You can connect with us on our website at firstparishyarmouth.org. Good morning. When we gather for worship at First Parish, we recognize that every person we meet provides us with an opportunity to know God more fully. I invite you at this time to greet those around you with the peace of Christ. If you're watching by yourself, send someone a text or an email or make a phone call later to let someone someone else know you see them. The peace of Christ be with you. We have a couple of announcements. We're taking orders for Easter flowers. You can find a link to place your order on our website or call the office. Throughout the season of Lent, we will be hosting a mental health and mindfulness program. These will be offered every Monday at 7 p.m. via Zoom starting tomorrow, February 22nd. Contact Jamie if you have any questions. And so we begin. I invite you to take a deep breath and center yourself. Let us be the church at worship. Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of living. Ours is no caravan of despair. Come, yet again come, 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 whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of living, ours is no caravan of despair, come, yet again come. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. Creator God, you walked this earth. Bare feet in the Garden of Eden. Bare feet on the road to Golgotha. You took on flesh and bones, a beating heart and human hands. Skin that could bruise and a heart that could ache. All to teach me how to love. So, Creator God, this Lent I pray, take my feet because I keep walking backward, and take my legs because I long to run to you, but keep getting lost. Take my back so that I can stand for your justice, and take the breath in my lungs so that even oxygen reminds me of you. Take my hands because love keeps slipping through my fingers like rain and take my arms so that I might learn to hold on to hope. Take my neck so that I might hold my head high for you and take my ears so that I might hear the spirit rush by me. Take my eyes so that I might finally see you. Life in the weeds, light in the darkness, beauty in the mess, and take my mouth so that I might sing of love and tell stories of grace. God of love, God of life, you took on skin and bones and walked on this earth. So in turn, I understand this faith to be an embodied one, a journey where all of me belongs to all of you, and I am better for it. Amen. In Christ alone, my hope is found. 
He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand, here in the love of Christ I stand. Good morning, friends. I want to start our time together today by having you repeat after me. We are going to clap and snap some patterns and I just want you to repeat the pattern after I do it first. You think you can do that? Great. Let's start. We're going to start off nice and simple. Your turn. Great job. All right. So we've got a simple pattern going. Let's spice it up a little bit. Your turn. Awesome. We're going to add some snaps in this time. Your turn. Great. And one last one. Awesome job. Well, why am I having us repeat patterns of snapping and clapping? We are in a new season in the church year. The season is called the season of Lent. It leads up to Holy Week. And at the end of Holy Week, we remember that Jesus died and then rose again on Easter morning. Lent is a season in the Christian year that repeats year after year after year. It begins on Ash Wednesday, which we just observed this past week, with the marking of a cross on either our forehead or our hand in ashes, reminding us that we have been created out of dust, and someday to dust we shall return again. And then this week is the first Sunday in Lent. We are getting started in this season of repetition and pattern. Throughout this series of worship, you will probably notice that we will be repeating several songs and we'll be repeating several practices, spiritual practices together. And so one way that we are hoping to do that this Lent is by doing a community activity, a collective activity as a church community in creating paracord bracelets, or as I like to call them, prayer accord bracelets. If you've received a bag of Lenten materials delivered to your door here locally in Maine, you should have received some paracord kits in that bag. One is a very long piece of paracord, one is a shorter piece of gray paracord, and then you should have gotten some small little strands of paracord as well in a couple different colors. So this week, as we begin a new prayer practice, we are going to create a bracelet out of just these gray, this gray color of paracord. And there's another instructional video that you can watch after worship today that will show you exactly how to make that paracord bracelet. We're going to create this base bracelet of just gray this week, and it's going to incorporate some of that repetition that I had us practice earlier. We have to make the same knot over and over and over again to make our bracelet this week. And I hope that as you weave together this bracelet and make that base for yourself, that you are able to offer God some of your prayers that you have as we enter this Lenten season. And then week after week, we are going to add to our prayer accord bracelets. 
we are going to add a single strand of color. We're going to weave it into our bracelet week after week. We'll incorporate a little video into worship so that you can see how you might weave that strand into your bracelet. But our hope is that you find a rhythm to offer your prayers to God. And in a really tangible way, you can weave these strands of color into your bracelet as though you are weaving your prayers into something that will stay with you, that you will hold and you will carry throughout this entire season of Lent. And remember that you do not carry those prayers alone, that our hope is that we are going to see prayer cord bracelets around our community. Maybe when you're shopping at the grocery store or walking your dog outside, you might spot someone else wearing a prayer cord bracelet as well, knowing that we share this journey, that we journey together in community with one another. If you do not have your own paracord materials to create a bracelet with us, please reach out to us and we will be able to provide you with some of those materials to join our, our community in creating paracord bracelets this Lent. Throughout Lent, we are using images as a way to see and understand scripture in new ways. This week's image named Time, was created by Hannah Garrity. Ms. Garrity says this about her art. Time, time is up, time stands still, time rushes, time flies, out of time, mark the time, over time, timeless. You can't stop time, time is precious, wait on time. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Mark chapter 1 verse 15. As a child, I wanted time to move quickly. I was always rushing toward my dreams, working hard, impatient to make them come true. Now that my dreams have come true, I want time to slow down. Time is now a commodity placed above all others that I have, it is precious. My new layer of dreams are for my children. They are third party dreams. I will watch time unfold. I will do my best to mold my children, to guide, support, release, love, embrace, encourage, correct them. I will watch and hope that their dreams and the ones I have for them will be realistic, will be realized. But I have no real control over realizing my dreams for others. Perhaps God, the parent, had some of these same feelings on time. Perhaps God resigned herself to this with her children, too. Perhaps her dreams for us are still unmet. Not perhaps, definitely. We know because of Jesus. We know because she sent her son to proclaim the news. We know because she embodied the human condition and taught us to wait, a way to live that is so pure that I stumble every time I try to emulate it. But emulate we must. The time has come. God is embodied. We must emulate her. The reading for this week is Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn apart and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. At once the spirit sent him out into the wilderness and he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. 
The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the reading. A scene from Pixar's film Up played in my mind over and over again after reading today's text. A young boy named Russell is in his scouting uniform. He is about eight or nine years old, and he makes his way up a few stairs to the porch of an older gentleman's house, the house of Mr. Carl Fredrickson. Russell knocks at the door and begrudgingly, Mr. Fredrickson opens it. And the scene proceeds in this way. Russell holds up a little book that must have had a short script written inside it and says, good afternoon, my name is Russell and I am a wilderness explorer in tribe 54, Sweat Lodge 12. Are you in need of any assistance today, sir? Mr. Fredrickson says, no. And Russell says, I could help you cross the street. Mr. Fredrickson says, no. Russell says, I could help you cross your yard. Mr. Fredrickson says, no. Russell says, I could help you cross your porch. Mr. Fredrickson says, no. And Russell says, well, I gotta help you cross something. Mr. Fredrickson says, no, I'm doing fine. And then he slams the door shut. He waits a moment thinking that Russell would leave him alone, leave his porch, and then he cracks the door open slightly and sees Russell still standing there, ready again to recite from his script from the very beginning. Good afternoon, my name is Russell. And Mr. Fredrickson rolls his eyes. At first, this movie came to mind because Russell is a wilderness explorer. And this week's text has a wilderness explorer of its own, Jesus, when he is driven into the wilderness by God's spirit. Connection, I thought. But that's pretty much where I thought that the connection would end. Because Russell is a wilderness explorer, Boy Scout, and Jesus was driven into the wilderness, not necessarily by his own accord. However, the more I thought about the movie and the personality of these characters, the more I thought that it did fit today's text and our start to the Lenten season. The message that I'm sharing with you today is not one where I want to invite you to take on the eager and enthusiastic persona of Russell and trudge straight forward into the wilderness. No, these pandemic days have felt all too much like the wilderness, and we've been in them for longer than 40 days and 40 nights. But maybe that's where we resonate with another character in the movie too, Mr. Fredrickson. Mr. Fredrickson's demeanor is not one of hospitality or excitement. Rather, he is impatient and irritable. Mr. Fredrickson is a widower and is isolated and is generally just sad. There's not much that brings him joy these days. There's not much that he has to look forward to. And I think right now we might identify a bit more closely with Mr. Fredrickson's point of view. We're struggling with our own griefs and losses. We're struggling with loneliness. We're struggling to find the silver lining of anything that happens these days. If someone asks us to do something that is hard or uncomfortable, or even offers a kind gesture, our automatic response might be, no, I'm fine, and we might want to slam the door shut. Maybe we'd rather not start this Lenten season that often feels solemn and dwells on Jesus's wilderness wanderings. We've been there, we've done that. So our text today is actually fitting that Mark tells this story in a very quick and sort of unemotional type of way. 
Mark is not eager to spend too much time on Jesus' wilderness wanderings. We don't want to spend any more time in the wilderness, and Mark doesn't share many details of the wandering anyway. In fact, if you blink your eyes while reading this passage, you might just miss the part where Jesus spends 40 days in the wilderness in the company of wild beasts and angels. In a span of just six verses, Mark manages to cover three huge threshold moments of Jesus's life. Jesus's baptism by John the Baptist, Jesus's stint in the wilderness with temptations from Satan, and also the very beginning, the start of Jesus's ministry in Galilee. Mark seems to stick to the events that occur without adding much fluff. He moves through these events with a sense of urgency, moving quickly from one pivotal experience to the next. We don't get a sense of anyone's emotions as it relates to these events. We are left without many of the details of how or why things are happening in this way. So then we, the interpreters, are left to decipher the details on our own. The one strand that is constant in this passage is the presence of God's spirit. The same spirit that descended upon Jesus in his baptism drove him into the wilderness and then filled his ministry in Galilee. So what do we do now as maybe the resistant and more grumbling Mr. Fredrickson's of our moment? Maybe we can hear Russell's question of, can I help you with anything today? More so as a question of, can I accompany you on one of life's moments today? Can I help you cross this threshold moment so you don't have to cross it alone? As we begin this journey of Lent, we too hear a knock at our door. The knock at our door is an invitation from God's spirit beckoning us to journey alongside one another and alongside Jesus. The knock at our door is reassurance that we need not move through life's threshold moments alone. So the good news today is not a burdensome invitation into the wilderness of Lent, but rather the good news today is an invitation into journeying with the divine through all of life's moments, the highs and the lows, the losses and the gains, the joys and the sorrows, the baptisms and the funerals, the wilderness and the mountaintop, the beginnings and the endings. So yes, friend, the same spirit that journeyed with Jesus journeys with us too. And so may we respond to God's knock at the door with an openness to journeying forward with Jesus. Amen. These fleeting charms of earth, farewell your springs of joy are dry. My soul now seeks another home, a brighter world on high. I'm a long time traveling here, below I'm a long time traveling away from home. I'm a long time traveling here, below to lay this body down. Farewell, kind friends whose tender care has long engaged my love. Your fond embrace I now exchange for better friends above. I'm a long time traveling here, below I'm a long time traveling away from home. I'm a long time traveling here, below to lay this body down. 
to lay this body down. When we gather as a community for worship at First Parish, we have a practice of pausing. And we pause to notice joys that are occurring in our lives and to also raise burdens, things that are hard, things that we know are better carried in community. And so I invite you this morning, if you are watching live, to share in the chat if you feel comfortable. Just know that that is public. And also know you're always welcome to text us prayers or send us an email. You can text the pastors at 207 846 3773. One of the readings scheduled for today that we didn't read when we read scripture is the story of Noah and the flood and the rainbow that appears as the sign of the covenant between God and God's people, the sign of God's love, the reminder that God will not abandon us. This morning's prayer makes reference to the rainbow and that sign. Let us be together in the spirit of prayer. God of flood and rainbow, barren desert and flowing river, God of wild beasts and angels, Gethsemane and Easter garden, we struggle as your people always have to make sense of where you are and why you let it be this way. When trouble comes to those who least deserve it, when flood and famine, pestilence and flames wipe out our efforts and our hopes of happiness, when prayers rise up seemingly unanswered and no help comes. Is it punishment for our sins or a testing of our faith? A lesson to be learned or just part of the way things are? And you as helpless as we are to prevent it? God, help us to switch off for now the endless questions in our minds and focus on the rainbow, sign of hope, symbol of your presence and your promise, or on Jesus wrestling the self-same demons as ours and defeating them, because love is always stronger. We pray for those going through hard times today, for victims of natural disaster and mental conflict, especially if they have been told that somehow they deserve it or that it comes from you. May they know that you are with them, not punishing, but suffering too, waiting and watching and hoping as they do, staying with them no matter what. We pray for those who have adopted the rainbow as their symbol or had it bestowed upon them, for those who for centuries have had to hide who they are and at last are finding courage to be proud. As members of the church, we are both victims and perpetrators of the prejudice that has marked too much of our history and shames us still. Forgive us and restore us, we pray, so that here of all places there may be no need for anyone to hide or to doubt that you made and love them as they are. May we all play our part in caring for one another and may there be rainbows when we need them to cheer our hearts, revive our souls, and encourage us to go on working with you for the coming of your kingdom of unity and joy. Amen.
As you go from this time today, I hope that you remember that the good news today is an invitation to journeying with God through all of life's moments. Because the same spirit that journeyed with Jesus journeys with us too. Go in peace. Amen. Christ beside us, Christ before us, Christ be behind us, King of our heart, Christ within us, Christ be below us, Christ above us, never to part. Christ on our right hand, Christ on our left hand, Christ all around us, shield in the strife. Christ in our sleeping, Christ in our sitting, Christ in our rising, light of our life. Christ beside us, Christ before us, Christ behind us, King of our hearts, Christ within us, Christ below us, Christ above us, never to part.